Good day and welcome to Modern Cinematics. Today we will rank the Die Hard movie franchise from worst to best. Let us know in the comments section if you agree with our picks. Consider this your spoiler warning and don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell. Let's start with the worst movie in the franchise. A Good Day to Die Hard. To kickstart the list with the movie that ended the Die Hard series, even if only temporarily. A Good Day to Die Hard has a ridiculous script and an even worse villain. Or should I say, villains. The acting is decent. The relationship between McLean and his son is good, but that's where it stops. The rest of the film is CGI heavy to the point where you just automatically switch off. Die Hard 2. Entertaining but nothing special. It rehashes concepts and ideas from the original. Instead of paying homage to the original, it feels like a cheap way to create nostalgia. Just like the first, it has great acting. But unfortunately, its villain pales in comparison to Hans Gruber. It could probably also be the worst in introduction to an antagonist in all of cinema. On top of that, there is inconsistency with the pace. At times it can also be very cheesy. Live free or die hard. This film is very underrated. I think the regular R rating being dropped for a PG rating put people off from this film. But it has some great action sequences and camera work. It has a good sidekick character in Justin Long, but not as good as Samuel L. Jackson. Some over-the-top action in the final act which you can see is just too much. Die Hard 1. One of the best action films ever made. The protagonist is a very likable character. Although he is the protagonist and a police officer, he does show emotions like fear and anxiety while on a flight in the opening scene. This makes him relatable. Die Hard also features one of the best antagonists in Hans Gruber, played to perfection by the late great Alan Rickman. Gruber and McLean have limited physical contact and instead communicate over walkie-talkie. But they are still able to bring a great deal of suspense to the film. The film is acted and directed brilliantly. The only issue I have with the film is that at parts, the script doesn't know how to deal with some acts. If certain characters had any wit, it could lead to the premature ending of the film. For example, when McLean calls 911 and they barely believe him, he could have informed them he is a police officer, given his details, and they would have sent more officers much earlier in the film, potentially drastically changing the film. Die Hard with a Vengeance, the first in the series to not be during Christmas time. The action starts immediately. The first scene with McLean in New York is knee-jerking. Sending John to this specific neighborhood with that particular task, you feel for him immediately even if it is the first movie in the franchise you watch. Samuel L. Jackson is probably one of the best sidekick characters in all of cinema. He isn't just there for the sake of it. He continually brings something to the table, moving the plot along. The film has an excellent villain in Jeremy Irons. The movie never slows down. It has a relentless pace. The only downside to this film is the last few scenes due to some lazy writing. This is our ranking for the Die Hard movie franchise. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing. Also, let us know in the comments section which franchise you would like us to rank next.